Thousands of years ago, Ireland was sparsely populated by hunter-gatherer communities. About 4000 BC, the arrival of Neolithic settlers introduced farming to Ireland. This Neolithic or New Stone Age period brought huge lifestyle changes to the hunter-gatherers. Farming fundamentally changed the fabric of society because there was no longer a need for people to devote all of their time to hunting. In contrast with hunter-gatherers, farmers built larger, more permanent dwellings and settlements. Perhaps the most significant aspect of this change was that people now had enough time to innovate. One of the most enduring legacies left by the Neolithic farmers was their large earthen constructions known as megaliths. Newgrange is arguably the most famous megalithic tomb in the world. It is at least as old as the Egyptian pyramids and older than Stonehenge in England. There is an astro-archaeological theory called the Cygnus Enigma that examines the relationship between Newgrange, the nearby passage tomb at Fornox and the Cygnus constellation. The theory suggests that Newgrange and indeed Fornox were part of an ancient astronomical master plan. New Grange, or Bruno Boigne, was excavated by Professor Michael J. O'Kelly between 1969 and 1975. The tomb dates back to 3200 BC and is the finest example of a passage tomb in Western Europe. It is not known who built this tomb, but from looking at the monument in stone art, it is clear that these people were intelligent, sophisticated and organised. The construction of Newgrange would have taken between 40 and 50 years and involved two generations of inhabitants, as their lifespan at that time was only 30 to 35 years. Amateur astronomers Anthony Murphy and Richard Moore have come up with an intriguing theory that suggests that Newgrange may have been part of an ancient astronomical master plan. The Cygnus Enigma begins here at Newgrange, this wonderful and impressive passage tomb here in the Boyne Valley in Ireland. This passage tomb was constructed over 5,000 years ago. The Cygnus Enigma examines the link between some of the stories and myths which come down to us from ancient times about this place and the heavens above our heads and suggests that in ancient times an astronomical master plan was put in place. The Cygnus mystery arose from the fact that the beautiful and gracious Whooper Swan arrives here to the fields in front of Newgrange every winter. Now this is probably the only site in the whole of County Meath where the Whooper Swan comes in significant numbers every year, making it a very important wintering ground for these birds. The swans fly in from Iceland uh, in October and they land here and they stay for six months and fly away again in March. They were first officially recorded here in 1966, but we really don't know how long those birds have been coming to Newgrange. And in fact, some of the ancient myths and stories suggest that perhaps they were coming here in ancient times. One of the most fascinating myths about Newgrange is the romantic tale of Angus and Kerr. Angus was a chief of the Tuatha an otherworldly race, and he was the owner and keeper of Brunabonia, Newgrange here behind us. Every night in a dream, Angus was visited by a mysterious maiden, and when he tried to reach out and touch her, she would disappear. Angus was madly and passionately in love with this maiden, and he vowed to find her. He enlisted the help of his mother, the goddess Boan, Boan searched for the maiden for a year but couldn't find her. So Angus turned to his father, the chief of the gods, the Dagda. And the Dagda in turn enlisted the help of another Tuatadanan chief from County Tipperary called Bub. Now Bub was able to tell the Dagda that this mysterious maiden was Care, and that she could be found by the shore of the lake of the Dragon's Mouth in Tipperary. When Angus eventually found the maiden, she was in the form of a swan and was surrounded by a large flock of swans. And the story goes that when eventually they came together, Angus himself was turned into a swan. And the two of them took off into the air, flew three times around the lake, and came back here to Brunabonia. 
when they came here, they put all the dwellers of this place to sleep with their enchanted singing, and then they went into the brew and remained there forevermore. It was the presence of the Hooper Swans here in the fields in front of Newgrange, coupled with some of the ancient myths and stories about this place which pertain to swans, which put us on the scent of an ancient astronomical mystery. Myself and Richard began to compare the plans of Newgrange with the outline of the constellation Cygnus, the giant swan constellation of the night sky. This constellation is distinctly cross-shaped, and the passage and chamber of Newgrange are cruciform in shape. And when you lay the plan of the constellation onto the ground plan of Newgrange, there is a very, very neat fit between the two. Sunrise on the midwinter solstice, the shortest day of the year. The sun rises over Red Mountain. Four and a half minutes later, the sun begins to shine into Newgrange, and there it marks the beginning of a new year. 